everybody and welcome to another episode of the Outside Insider, making sure the mic's on and we haven't had a technical blip in the first 80 seconds, which is good. That's already a step forward. The goal today is to not accidentally show the spreadsheet the entire time we're looking at a prospect. And giving it. We're getting there, all right? Rome wasn't built in a day. Mark's got his bingo card out. He's buzzing for it. I'm glad we've added uh, a new fixture to Mark's routine. It's actually really awesome. Like, I'm buzzing for it. Um, if it's your first time watching, welcome. Uh, if you can hit the like button on YouTube, that'll be absolutely tremendous. If not, I will take it personally. Um, we're essentially going to be taking a look at some NFL draft prospects, grading them based on specific attributes and trying to build somewhat of a big board uh, for Howie Roseman and the Eagles to look at. So I'll show you what we've got so far. Uh, and it's hopefully one of the few times that the spreadsheet comes on. So we, we've mainly been looking at linebackers and it's not letting me zoom in much further. I know that there was a comment on the video last time saying that uh, it was hard to see. So pull it. Oh, hang on. Aha, there we go. So um, this is where we're at so far. It could do with some touching up in a good way. But if, if we... Oh, I don't really want to talk about that. But basically, we came away with a big takeaway that Edgerin Cooper's probably the best linebacker that fits the Eagles. Trevin Wallace he, he graded out second. And as a backer that may be like third round, fourth round, if they miss out on somehow Wilson and Cooper, I think that would be a very, very good pick. Now, this grading isn't to say that Wallace is better than those guys, but in terms of what the Eagles need, he's good in these specific areas and that makes him more valuable to them. So for me, I think, you know, there is a chance they try to go value. We know they don't typically, so I'm just trying to mute my notifications here. Uh, we know they don't typically like spending at the position. So the only one we wouldn't really like is Jordan McGee. Um, we all know why. The tape was literally abysmal. Uh, there's a cut up of it on my Twitter page if you want to go watch it. Or you can obviously go back and watch the stream as well. Jeremiah Trott is okay. Uh, I would say probably about bang average. I'd rather Colson than him at this point. He just offers a bit more in the way in my opinion, at least, of just being well-rounded. Like, Trot is very athletic. He kind of lacks tackling angles. He's not overly instinctive. can get stuck quite a lot and just hovers around the ball. Colson maybe lacks that athleticism, but delivers more consistently across the board. So, so that's where we're at with linebackers. Receivers, we've only done one. Uh, he set the benchmark. That's Texas A&M's Anaya Smith. And at safety, we have done nothing yet. So plenty more meat on the bone to get through today. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get into it soon. Uh, let's see how long it takes Liam into <laughs> Hopefully, less than a play. I really try to crack down on it. I believe I've got it in the bag. I can come out of this swinging, I reckon. So, so we shall see. Uh, little G Griffith is in again with that Eagles love. We absolutely love to see it. Hope you are well, my friend. Um, let's get into it. I mean, we do have some players on our spreadsheet to look at. Ricky Purcell of Florida was one of them. So I guess we can... Oh, no, my music's on the screen. Ignore that. No, no, no. Don't be... Stop it. Don't look at Drake. Oh, I'm not even sharing the tab anyway. There we go. Everything's fine. So do we have a film? Any any film on him? Or is it just highlight? I don't like just doing highlights. We know that. I'd have to search the word thin. So that's also fantastic. Um, film maybe South Carolina. Senior Bowl could be a shout. Here we go. Right, LSU. I, I don't mind that. Obviously, LSU are quite... Can we all see the screen before we get off and rolling? Can we all make sure we can see the screen? Yep. Any comments and you can't see the screen, obviously, please let me know. Um, but so long as we can all see it, that's a good start. So, all right. Here we go. Let, let's get rolling with Ricky Purcell. Now, I don't know if it's going to give you his number or do the little tag thing. In. Oh, it does. Okay, lovely. So slot receiver by the looks of it, which is already a, a big hit for the Eagles. First impression, he looks a little bit bigger than I typically expect. If I was to guess, 6'6", six, six, about 180. Should we see if we're right, ladies and gentlemen, off the bat? Should we see if we've got that right? I said 6'180", and he's actually uh, 190 and 6'1". So not, not bad estimations there from a young man. You know, the, the eyes are working. We're warming up the old pupils this evening. And, you know, a bit of a bigger body. Does he move fluidly? Immediately, yes. Um, we can watch that one again. That's beautiful. Very nice. Um, I love the way he kind of throws his weight forward to make a cut. Shift his weight into his back foot. Very nice. Get a sort of separation. Is he targeted? Yes, he is. That's a good first start. I mean, the Eagles need players that are uh, elusive in this scheme. If they can add some blocking prowess out of the slot, that's great. But I don't think it's overly pivotal. 
given the type of offense that they run. Um, I might be wrong. I mean, obviously, we're looking at a Kellen Moore offense now, and he did typically utilize some more blockers. And with that in mind, that is not the best start in the world. Let's add a category on our spreadsheet for blocking. I'm not going to share it because you'll hate it. Um, oh, we can't really. Okay. Well, we, we can keep it in mind when we make the grades anyway. But we're all right. We're off and rolling. It's not the best block in the world, that is it. Watch it again. Yeah, not brilliant there. Are we going to be coming away from this saying, oh, Ricky, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Ricky. Or are we just going to not be singing that? That's what we need to find out. So motion across the line of scrimmage. And blocking again. That's better. That was a bit better. Okay, so he kind of negates that first one. We hope that's the exception to the rule and not the rule. And we're already looking a bit better. He does find... He, well, that's twice now he's kind of been really able to find that soft spot in the defense quite comfortably. I like that. This is, I'll tell you what, it's all been Ricky this first drive, isn't it? So he runs right up to the corner, forces him... To, oh, come out of it. I've got you space, bro, haven't I? Forces him to open his hits. Then makes a cut inside to get that extra separation. Yeah, nothing to dislike there. Good catch. Cracked it well. Nice. So, first impressions from three minutes worth of actual play. Pretty good. Now, I don't know anything about Ricky Purcell. I'll level with you. I don't know where he's slated to go. I don't know what his draft stock is, but... If we're to compare him to Anaya Smith, I'd say maybe a little bit better. Again, across the line of scrimmage. For someone that size, he does move very well. Like, very, very well. You'd expect him to maybe... Like, someone that frame, you'd almost expect a more physical, possession-based receiver. If you're out of the slot, almost like a Jordan Matthews type guy. Uh, and what we're actually seeing is someone that's a little bit more versatile than that. Speed-wise, is definitely there. Good, really good get-off from the line of scrimmage. Blocking leaves a little bit to be desired, but it's willing. He's not scared of a block. He's just a little bit um, light with it, I guess. And that could just be because of his leaner frame, potentially. But he's got long arms. There's no reason he can't be making better of it. Ah, oh, that's a hell of a get-off. Go, go deep for him. Doesn't. But look how quick he accelerates that off the line from an acceleration standpoint. Just not even hesitating right at the corner. There's no real twitch in those steps. He's not trying to do anything too complicated. Just a straight-up go route. Um, and I'd be amazed if many people would have caught him there. Just size-wise, like, it's hard to defend size and speed. A lot of guys, I know we're trying to find ways where guys have both, but very seldom does it happen. And Purcell looking like he might actually have those here. Haven't seen him impress yet. That's my only complaint. We're nearly a quarter in, and LSU just not, well, presumably for a reason, getting near him. Oh, missed the ball there. Now, was that on him or was the ball a bit high? Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to put that on him, if we're honest. I don't think that is his fault exactly. <laughs> you know, Christ. He, he went up for it. Just a shame he couldn't bat. I guess the other advantage of having a receiver that size is they can bat balls out the air and effectively play corner if the, the ball sails in them or something. We see Smitty do it quite a lot for the Eagles. That's our first look we've had. Now, just, it looks like a zone look. It's about as close as we've got to him going up to a corner and trying to put a move on him. And he, and he breaks inside quite well with that really sleek first step. So this is, this is good. I mean, we're starting off with a good prospect here. If I'm honest, expectations were low after, after the last stream. But he's looking all right. I don't mind this whatsoever. Uh, the contact isn't bad. It's, it, the blocking is the only weakness I've really seen. And I guess that's saying something. Yeah, that launch is crazy. Look how quick he accelerates. Compare it to his teammate. I know his teammate's impressed. But yeah, I mean, that's that's unfair to compare because one's literally trying to put a move on to avoid press and the other one... Look, but look at this the angle. Like, he has really big strides and he picks up speed. This isn't like acceleration, like zippy Quez Watkins acceleration. This is just long stride will te tear up a lot of field very quickly. Um, we, I think I just need to see a bit more cuts and breaks and, and that sort of thing to see how his route running is, but... 
I haven't really seen him absorb a lot of contact yet either. So, so we'll see. There's still time. But initial impressions are very... I'd be looking if if uh, Anais Smith is the benchmark. Maybe second round grade here. Uh, I don't know. What, what are you guys thinking? Where are we at in the comments? Where are we thinking with this? I'd like to see the Eagle add some speed on the offense. Campbell's the only receiver whose specialty is speed. Really enough, this might be a very good comparison. Like, this might be a very, very good comparison. They're, they're kind of built similarly. The only difference is, obviously, Campbell's a, a bit more outside from what we've seen. But even here, like, Pazell's doing it to some degree. It's not parcel, is it? It's parcel. Oh, yeah, Pet Pearsall. I don't know what he's called. Ricky, we'll call him. Good catch. Um... It jumped up for it well. I don't know if that's on the quarterback under throwing it or if that's him, but adapted to it well, made the catch. Can't ask for much more than that in that scenario. So you've got a bunch formation here. I motion him across the line. They do that a lot with him. Looks like it's zoned because the corners haven't really moved. Yeah, it just comes up, engages a block, and doesn't overly lose that one. So, I mean. Oh, I know. That was, oh, hello, what's going on here? That could not have gone more backwards if they actually, I'm quite impressed at how backwards that went. Um, shout out to Super Phil Stifle for the like on Facebook. Appreciate you, sir. I can't see you like the video on YouTube, but if you are liking it on YouTube, I love you dearly and I'll give you a cuddle. I'll buy you a beer sometime. How about that? Probably. When I get to Philly, eventually. Hmm. So yeah, that, that get-off is really... I, just, I want to see him in press. Not in press, but like in press. Like in press coverage. Very quick off the lot. I want to see what happens when he gets jammed. We just, maybe we should look at some other tape because I think we, we get a vibe of what we're getting. I want to see someone play him in press. Well, a senior ball was bound to because the corners want to all in, increase their stock, don't they? So they're, they're probably play, bound to play a bit more press there. Uh, any idea who's who here? Oh, he's there. Okay. Oh, this is just the actual drills, isn't it? That doesn't help me too much. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, there we go. Right, this is what we wanted. Right, now, obviously, it's a senior one. We, it's hard to really get a gauge on who he's playing against, but active hands. Look at this momentum. Look, breezes past contact and retains that speed. Let the corner just don't get near him. Tracks the ball nicely over his shoulder. This is good. This is. There's not a lot to dislike. It's quite a boring start, really, because this is just very... So look at that. Okay. Put the track in, let over his back shoulder. I point it well. That that's where his size is going to come in. I mean, it does look like he's playing against an actual child, but it, it, that is where his size comes in, for sure. Hmm. Any more press looks? That was a nice little move. Absorbs. Ah, oh, see, that's the only thing with the senior ball. Like, I guess it's. Especially in drills, they're not going like 100%. Oh, hello, 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 hello. What was that? Hello. Run it back. Oh! Yeah, I like that. Right across his face, look. Christ. Yeah, I like it. He's fun. He is a fun player. Very fun player. I still want to see him in proper press, though. Can we get some highlights of him in press? That would be great. All right, there we go. Right. Uh, I don't know if there's audio here when he's going to... Oh, we're in the proper all 22. Did he just fall over? That's not great. He did, didn't he? South Carolina, this is. Um, push you through contact there. Yeah, I, that, that's becoming a bit of a thing. Whether it's blocking or, or here. And it does just make you wonder a little bit, longevity-wise, when he gets hit. But when he gets hit by an NFL safety or an NFL corner... Is he going to keep the ball in his hand? Did he have a problem fumbling at all? Can we just check this really quickly? Um, I just want to see if he's fumbled a lot because I've got a really weird feeling. It, it's... Oh, damn it. 
Um, excuse me a minute. I'm just checking this because I'm kind of intrigued. I bear in mind I've not watched him before this, but what is it track fumbles? I don't think it does. I don't actually think they track fumbles. Very annoying. Okay, well, look, I'm just saying, because of the way... Someone his size, to be that quick, I guess, has to compensate somewhere, and I feel like that's strength. Uh, flashes back to Adrian Killings on that backwards play. Love that. That's a niche reference. I love that from you. Uh, I'd like to see... Oh, yeah, we got that. So, uh, yeah, any feedback you guys have on these players, do let me know. The Eagles lost another back office guy, the money man. They did. Uh, I mean, I think my take on this, uh, before we get into some more tape, is, I mean, I was going to cover it. And I just thought, nah, because they do it every year. They, they lose someone every year, whether it's Andrew Berry or another like high-paced executive. They just seem to constantly lose executives. And yet nothing really changes. So it just feels like how he is able to just bring people in, get them up to speed, and then they get hired because, well, they can't get Howie, so they'll get the next best thing. So I'm not overly concerned with losing him. Um, like, I, I don't know. I think Howie's got such a reputation for his cap management that, yes, losing someone like that is, uh, you know, a shot. You know, it's a shot to the chest, but it's not a shot to the heart. Like, well, they'll survive. They'll be fine. Uh, and they'll get some guy from the XFL or, or an underrated prospect from somewhere. And before you know it, everything will be golden again. So, yeah, please don't panic. I'm not overly concerned with that whatsoever, would be my initial takeaway. Uh, what are we seeing here? I just missed him on that play, didn't I? That's where we fell over. Right, we got that. All right, it's okay. So he's this side. He, he moves really well. He moves really well. I'm just... just... See, so yeah, we're seeing it a bit more now. Like now, like this so much easier from this view. Turns nicely. There's not a ton of separation from it, though. The corner kind of... This is a nice little matchup. The corner... Uh, press, press. Here we go. Right, right, right. Press at the line. This is what we've all come to see. Little jab first step. Tries to move inside. And then work back up. The stem. Does he work through contact? No, really. Yeah. I don't know if that was meant to be a comeback route or not. We'll see what Matey Boy does. Okay, yeah, I guess it was. I guess it's two interior curls, so... So it wasn't a, an adaptation. He was trying to curl. Get, does get a separation in the end, but uh, looks like he just gets met by a, a great play by that linebacker. Wow. Great play by the linebacker. Yeah, he, he gets separation at the end of it. He's there. He's slippery, but it, it's not through physicality, which again, with someone being his size, is it's really perplexing to watch because you almost expect it and it's just replaced with this like five foot nine level speed. And there, he's got wide open. Press again down the bottom of your screen. Um, works inside nicely. He's holding his own. Holding his own in it. Find the soft spot and just sit. Just sit. Ah, oh, okay. I guess, he, you know, you can't call audibles all the time, but I wouldn't have been mad at him just sitting there for a bit. Works inside there. You can see see which one is him so clearly. That's, he uses that inside move quite a lot, though, the inside release. But look at how much separation he's got there compared to everyone else. He literally a step in front. And then... Does that little trademark shift back outside? And yeah, it's into a safety. It can't be helped, but the moves are there. See, even there. Look, just up to him. Head fake one way. Really, put, he's not even looking at where he's going. It's the head fake goes through the other way. Runs right across the corner, retaining speed. Tracks the ball. Yeah, this is good. Good tape. I'm a little bit worried physically wise how we'll hold up at the NFL level and it you know ball security might be an issue but we haven't seen anything to say it would be it's just hypothesizing very very clean route runner though now we're seeing a bit more of him it's it's very good to see Yeah, I like that. Find the softs. Yeah, good. It's very exaggerated. The only thing with it is that none of it's subtle. And we see this with a lot of college players, but, it, but it's such a dead giveaway to a guy like Darius Slay, who's a bit more experienced. As soon as that head goes, they, they can be one step ahead because 
you can kind of see where it's going. But even there, you, if the head goes down, you know he's going the other way. Uh, I, I, it's not a criticism as much as it is something to watch for at the next level. Oh, that was a nice... Uh, look at the acceleration. Look at the acceleration, though. Right, look, he's, he's at a complete standstill there near enough and just puts it on. Just really puts it on. Great catch as well. He's won me back with that. That's a great play. Just look, he slows right up to the corner and just bang. There it is. Straight past. That's a gorgeous looking play. Absolutely gorgeous. I right, Jerry Rice's kid could he had on day two. We can take a look at him. We can absolutely take a look at him. Uh, doesn't look fast at all, but it's obviously quite fast. I wonder what his 40 was. Um, should we have a quick look? See what his 40 was. Ricky Persol 40. 4.41. So pretty quick. Pretty quick. Not, you know, game-breakingly quick. But for a guy that's 6'1", nearly 200 pounds, I'd say that is um, more than serviceable. You know, that that's certainly fine. It's, it's not so much the speed as much as it is the agility. I think the acceleration is much better than the long speed. The long speed... Well, we might see one here. I don't know. In short bursts, I'd be amazed if he didn't, like, tear up the cone drills and, and the agility testing. Stuff like that is still a worry, though, where you can just get swallowed up by a corner. But, yeah, everything's very aggressive. I don't know. Um, He's definitely better than Anaya Smith, just from a completeness perspective. We, we haven't seen much in the way of, like, yak potential yet, though, or anything like that. But, I don't know. The, the route running, sir, he's very agile. And for a guy his size to be that agile is terrifying. He can put moves on anyone. Hmm. Yeah, see, yak-wise, you'd figure it would be. You'd fit, or, or at least in like, the return game, maybe. Especially now. With like the new rule changes, he could be a factor. But that was a nice little switch there. Oh, he wanted that one. <laughs> he really wanted that one. Just again, finds he's consistently able to find the soft spots in the defense. He's not fighting anything. High points the ball well each time. We're not seeing him make, have a massive whopper yet or a drop or anything like that. Go on, back shoulder. It's not to him, is it? Awful throw. Just breezes by him, then runs across his face. Yeah, he's he's a lot of fun to watch. Hmm. Even there, catches that one. It's another poorly thrown ball, really. Luke McCaffrey is a name I like, Alexis. A name I like very, very much. You know ball. I like that. That's, that's a good shout from you. I can't lie. The tape makes him look slower than his burst. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I think that... Can we get his... Um, well, he's not Luke, is he? He's Ricky. Ricky Persol Rask. Has he got a rascal yet? I don't know. Don't think so. Uh, I'm just trying to find the. All right, so we had a 42 vertical, uh, a 6.63 .6 cone, and a four second shuttle. Now, I don't know what's a, a 10 yard split of 1.5. 1 1.57, sorry. Um, what's this? This is from the 33rd team. Who's, uh, I'm trying to see what they've said. Loose hips, feel for working through traffic. Um, subtle, refined understanding of route running, which is kind of what we've said. Uh, understands coverages, which is what we've said. Um, catches the ball easily, yeah. Uh, not truly explosive as a mover, which is what Duck said. So, interesting. I think we, we've covered everything there between us. Uh, Roman Wilson, Michigan. Let, let's get him on the spreadsheet and we can grade out uh, our new favourite. Not new favourite, but a new player as well. So who was that? Jeffrey Wilson? Not Jeffrey Wilson. Roman Wilson. I don't know where I got Jeffrey from. Um, Roman Wilson, Michigan. All right. So Ricky Purcell. Where are we going? I would say release. Very good. Probably like an 8.5. I ain't going to find much quicker. The stem. Um... Probably seven and a half. It's not terrible. It's, it's good. Agility is probably an 8.5. Hands, an eight. Long speed is where he lacks, I think. Like, he's got that second gear and it kind of taps out 
quite high. So I'm going to say 6.5 or 7. If Smith was 7.5, it was quite zippy. I'll go, we'll go 7. An adaptation, probably 7 as well. Uh, I'm going to knock a point off his stem or bring him down to 7 just because... Um, Physically, I, I thought, especially in blocking, and there were times he got swallowed up. Like, he's agile, but I don't think he's physically good enough with contact to to get that to the next level. Uh, oh, it's an 8.5. I wonder why that score came out so low. So, yeah, he grades out a little bit better by 0.5 over Anaya Smith. And I said he was better, but I was expecting a, a bigger a bigger pump there. I can't lie. I was expecting a, a 47, 48. So, only fractionally. Very interesting. But, but again, it's in different ways where Smith is better down the field. And he's a, you know, you're not losing much and he's probably a little bit stronger. So very interesting there. Uh, Doug says six for the stem. I'll meet you in the middle. I'll say 6.5. and then We'll make it a bit fairer. Because um, he can get through contact, but that makes him the exact same as Anaya Smith, which is even more. You're just a chaotic man, aren't you? You're just a chaotic man. You love it. Um, let's have a look at who, who we got next on our list. Quinion Mitchell. I think it's a familiar, a familiar name. Film. Uh, Toledo. Here we go. What are we looking at here? This is against SJSU, whatever that is. San Jose State, one would assume. But assume it makes an ass out of you and me. And this wouldn't be the first time I've been made into an ass. Okay, so here we go. Now, is he breaking this down or just going to let it run? That's what I'd like to know. I think he's actually talking through it, isn't he? Which is very frustrating. Let me piggyback off it without, you know. Um, here we go. We've got a game against Buffalo, not the Bills. No idea where he's at. Who, who, what are we watching? Is he, oh, he's a corner. Right, I was looking for a receiver. Excuse me. All right, so this will be our first corner on the board. No idea where he is here. That would help, wouldn't it? Do we get it uh, on the next play, maybe? Yeah, okay, right. So he's 27 down here. Nice click and close. Um, tackles at the groin, which is interesting. Definitely a good sign for the new hip <laughs> swerve level. In snowy conditions as well, mine. So that is going to play a, a bit of a factor, I guess, in movements we'll try and find another game after this oh is it, is it rainy or snowy i don't look snowy only thing with his view is we don't get that full uh view do we seems very patient is my, my initial takeaway a few plays in very patient get around the ball get around the ball okay all right I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's not terrible. Um, I haven't really seen enough to gauge yet. There's long speed there. Well, make a play. Unlucky. See, that's one where we'd really need that all 22. It's really hard with this view. But it's number 27, if you can see it on your screen, and you maybe miss him when the camera cuts. Oh, wow. Cough, what a catch. All right, now I've seen him in the blitz. Didn't really get much going. Oh, good, but I like that. I'm in a number 26. Great pressure as well. Great pressure. I feel like sometimes they're just not lining them up. Oh, good. Oh, it wasn't a bad... For the new NFL, that's a great tackle, look. Right at the ankles. <laughs> not brilliant, but he, he did trip him up. So, I mean, a tackle is a tackle, I guess. Get down here. He struggled to come off that block a little bit there, didn't he? Eee! Okay, so, so the tackling angles aren't great. That's two now that have been a bit wishy-washy. Hmm. I think they get a bit better, to be honest. We've not seen him do much of anything at the minute. Maybe you need to go and actually look at one of those film tapes matey boys cut up and we can just narrate the top of it. Here we go. Right. So 
Bone in the nickel. Yeah, we're not really getting to see much of him, are we? That's the thing. <clears throat> oh, what a pick. Shame it's all shame it wasn't our guy, but it was that of a pick. Right. A bit of a longer view. Ah, oh, it's really hard to gauge anything when the cameras are zooming out at any given moment. Oh, got a little bit stuck there. Kind of got this old great cut by the receiver and he just, yeah, it's not bad. The same depth, I guess. Yeah, we definitely need to see another game there because this isn't really giving us much to work with at all. We, we are not seeing him in coverage. We're not seeing him tackle. We're not, he's just walking around really, which is no fault of his own. It's just, the way the game's playing out, everything's going to the other side of him, which could be a testament to how good he is in coverage. I'm not sure. Nice click there. Puts the ball loose. Okay, right. There's a, a first real highlight play. How quick was he to the cut? Have a look. And he's so receiver cut. There's the foot in the ground. Pretty instant. And by the time he closes, he tries to jump the ball, realizes he can't, and just does enough to punch it out. So, solid play. Was that him on the hit? I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating because the, the couple of plays we have seen have been pretty good. Tell me that wasn't him missing the tackle at least. No, all right, we're fine. We're we're still alive. We're all we're all good. Let me see. Here we go. Come on. Oh, brother, throw something his way, man. Give give me something. Here we go. Bit of bit of hustle. Pushes him out of bounds. It's all right. He's driving someone into the ground. So he's got the physicality there, right? We might actually see what he. No, never mind. Camera moves again. Great throw. Go right, just go right, go right, go right. I don't know if it's just a quarterback really not liking that right side of the field, but he uh, isn't going... Oh, here we go. Go on, Mitchell. Get up. Oh, here we go. He didn't catch it, did he? He didn't, right. Get get your hand. Look at that, look. Get get that. I think the receiver had it as well, and he shoved it out by the looks of it. What's the, uh, the jump blade? Where's the ball? But yeah, the receiver's got the ball. Um, and he's able to just jump and smash it out of his hand. So a very uh, smash mouth style of play that we're seeing from him at the moment, which is nice. I think it's, it's nice to see. I'd have liked him to. I, I'd almost. It's really weird because, I, I, in a way, you want that aggressiveness just to touch earlier to swap the ball out of danger and not risk him coming down with it, especially at the NFL level when when the receivers are so much stronger. Like. They don't do that as much. Um, however, the physicality to do it is is very impressive. So we'll see what you guys are saying. Oh, I've done it again. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, I'm sorry. Crying out loud. I said I wasn't going to do it as well. I'll go back to that play at least because it was a good... It said on mine it was sharing. That's the worst thing. It actually said it was sharing that screen. Bollocks. Called it. Oh... Yeah, we need to see that again. Mate, we need to see it, period. Uh, I was all right. Damn it. Screen share 3,000. Uh, I'm amazed you all put up with that, to be honest. Right, we're back. Liam thinks we should be here. All right, okay. Give me a sec. We'll run it. You haven't missed much. Uh, this is the play I was looking at, though. Um, just almost like punches it clear with the catch point. I'll we'll try and go a bit further back. And just, just there. Let's, so the receiver has the ball and he's able to just smack it out of his hands. So that, that was what I was talking about. There hasn't been much. I'm really sorry. That was like five minutes worth of content. I feel genuinely atrocious for that. Sorry, boys. Um, wasn't intentional. Sorry, duck. I owe you one there.
Uh, what I need to start doing is putting the um, the link in the chat or something, or just having the stream up on another screen. That would probably solve it as well. That's my error. Um, but we're back now for the last two minutes of it. Everything's fine. Uh, right, so he's back there. Wasn't his play on the ball. Is that him down there? No. He's not. It's the only thing that we're not seeing much from him. Like, there we did. Here we go. Nice back pedal, quite fluid. Yeah, I think I'm getting the vibe that he just he likes to be a bit more physical. Like he'd rather go for the player than the ball, if that makes sense. Which look, it's a safer option because you're not going to risk a player like mossing you and then uh, making you look a little bit silly. But it does come with its own risks. But I, I'd almost prefer that level of physicality if you can make it work. Comes downhill here. Yeah, it's not bad. Start playing Zelda. I might lay. I'm not sure if I'm streaming twice tonight. I'm not sure. Um, if I'm not, I'm, I'll definitely stream tomorrow. But I, I'll have a think. But I, I do miss Zelda. I had a lot of fun doing that last night. So we'll, we'll 100% be running that back again. Did you miss that last night, Matt? Or were you there? I can't remember if you saw any of it. But we, we got like two hours into Zelda. I got my first little triangle piece and everything. It was great. Bloody love the Triforce. My favourite of all the forces. Yeah, I think we need some more tape on this because this just ain't doing it justice. But we, we saw one highlight play. Um, we'll see what this one throws up. Come on then, load now. Oh, adverts within adverts. Imagine watching an advert and then watching this and there's also an advert on it. You'd be absolutely mortified, wouldn't you? Uh, is it just okay? Right, so so we do have some um, some some tape here. So twenty seven zero watch it. Okay, instincts are there. Look at that. Reads that very well to jump the ball. Now he is playing Northern Illinois, so again I'm not putting a ton of stock into it, but it's a good play. Can't be mad at it. I mean we're grading what's in front of him, and he he makes a good play there. Uh, okay, next one. Okay. Only thing I'm worried about is because these are high. It's all the same game. That's three picks in one half, though. Let's let's not write that off. That is three interceptions in a half. Like he is on an absolute piss missile of a game. Yeah, very good. Are we going to see him against anyone else? Maybe is he going to get another one? He is. That's number four. What what are we watching now? That's four inside, just over a quarter of football. Is this a game of NCAA 14 or are we bugging? Like, what is going on? Hmm. What, uh, maybe it's just a quarterback thing. Right, here we go. Here's another team. Looks like some prime high school football. I can't lie. It's hard to gauge when he's not yeah, I don't. We've just watched that game. It was useless. Um, just seen that play. He's just showing the same plays. Here we go. Oh, I, I, he's got some range to him. He's got some range to him. I can't lie. He looks solid. Yeah, that was the one we saw in the last video. Tackling wise, well, that tackle is now banned, so that's great. But tackling, I think, was the only weakness I saw. Was he wasn't overly proficient in Let's see if we can find some more you are seeing this so i you're not watching a spreadsheet again i missed the spreadsheet i was there for mario and was oh he's gaslighting me on my own stream look unbelievable 16 great british pound for pillows you guys need a walmart since when did james winston play for northern illinois um yeah i, I get what you're saying duck i think the, the only game they've actually got is oh here we go right this will be interesting so this is Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously the son of Marvin Harrison, Harrison Sr., against Quinya Mitchell. So this is going to be a lot more telling, I think, about what we're going to see from him. So here we go. This is going to be fun. It's only a minute and a half, so I guess it's just a few targets they had. A little bit sticky, a little bit handsy, not grabby. Just feel his way around the route. Hey, that might have been P.I., Okay, All right, what have we got here? Okay, not bad. Uh, 
he's a bit grabby, isn't he? There was always a grab there, it looked like. Let me just pause it there. Or is that just the camera? That looked like a grab to me. Do you look at that hand come down? That's an Elbit shot on a fucking potato, but... Yeah, that looks like a grab to me. Like, look at where that hand then comes down. Uh, knocked out of bounds anyway, but... Yeah, oh, it was! It was a grab. I told you. Well, look at that. Turns out I'm a bloody genius. I don't know why we're getting a shot of this. Oh, that's a horrific camera change. <laughs> oh, that gave me an aneurysm. Right, here we go. Oh, is this uh, Jackson Smith in Jigba? Hmm. Oh, I do want to use again. I'm not watching that. Right, here we go. There's a bit much going on with the camera. Yeah, so bigger play competition, it doesn't seem to stick as well, does it? He gets very... Maybe it's just because he's panicky, because he's not able to blanket guys that he could, you know, when they're playing for, you know, arse end of nowhere, Ohio. But, I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It's just not great. What are we saying with that one? Uh, man's moving a bit too sticky, isn't it? That's why it's 17. Man's on a ting with their rookies, fam. He loves it. Love the mic stand. Look, see? That's just for you, K1. That is just for you we got that one in for. I, I had enough of the, um, you know, the, the, the slander for having no mic stand. So I thought we'd bring one in. He's going to be a flag magnet in the NFL. Referees are going to develop shoulder injuries throwing all those flags on him. What a comment. See, what I've done is made Duck angry by, you know, streaming him a spreadsheet for the last half an hour. Um, so, so that's what's going on there. Let me just turn up my iPad to make sure I've got that on the stream as well. Cool. Um, yeah, so all right, let's get a grade on him. We haven't done a corner yet. Oh, I've got a corner sheet. Go oh, on, no. What are we going to do here? Um, uh, I'm not even sharing the spreadsheet now. I can't even, the one thing I can't stop sharing, I now can't stop. Can't start, so that's good. Corner, same things, but it's just a little bit different. Um, and we go for instinct, tackling, um, press, speed, all skills, effort. I would say for a corner, uh, and we're going to start things off obviously with uh, Quinion Michel. Oh, what's oh, what have I done there? Oopsie, can I just highlight and keep right? I've got a whole. Instincts, Jeremiah Trotter. Tackling, Jeremiah Trotter. Pressing, Jeremiah Trotter. Yeah, that's where we're going. Uh, so, Quinion Mitchell. Instincts. Seven and a half. They're pretty good uh, from what we've seen. Tackling, six and a half because he gets very grabby. And the, the uh, even the tackle angles against his other opponents weren't exactly brilliant. Impress. 6.5, I guess. We haven't really seen it, so it's hard to say. Speed, maybe a 7. Ball skills, 7.5. Effort. Effort's there. Um, and that will bring us to 42.5. So that's... If we compare that to the other grades, again, we're talking, what, second, third round? Roughly, if we go to safety, we haven't done one yet. Receivers are 45s. Second, third round, I would say. XL sheets are dead, fam. Straight rubbish. Marvin Harrison will make a lot of CVs, probably. Probably will. But at the same time, I I, I don't know. There are also like traits of it being potentially an issue before. So um, we, we've got some senior balls. So we can watch this and then we'll move on to someone else. Um, but yeah, we'll have a, let's have a look. Get us in some drills. Here we go. So look at the quarterback. Yeah, he got beat there. Oh, okay. Somehow got away with it. Oh, I'm not, I'm, doing, I'm not doing it again. There we go. But, uh, no one saw that. No one saw that. No one saw that. No, we're fine. Look, we can see it now. Don't, I don't want I don't to see the comment, look. We're fine. I fixed it. We're all right. Because I had to, you know, on the... Oh, see you later. Yeah, I, I don't know. He's, he's solid. I mean, he's not bad. Should we watch McKinstry? And then we can, from there, maybe get a, a gauge on how he grades out in comparison. Would, would that be better? Bruv. <laughs> Quinion will go mid. Do you reckon? Footwork. Yeah, I would say 
Uh, maybe, maybe we do. Well, let's. Where's my corner one? So we're instincts, tackling, press, speed, ball skills, effort, agility, probably, isn't it? Yeah, but then we got too many. It needs to be out of fifty every time. Maybe we take instincts out because he doesn't really need it. So for agility, which is just hip fluidity, um, short-term quickness, footwork, that sort of thing, uh, I'd probably say. What about the same, to be honest? So if he's going first round, all right, well, let's just check McKinstry. And then from there, we can just see how they compare and what the grades are. Because if he is like 46, 47, which is what I would expect, right? I'm expecting 46, 47 here for McKinstry. And we can just get a vibe on... Because McKinstry really should be no deeper than what? Early 20s? In press against Georgia, nice and low. It kind of exposed out of his stance a little bit. You can already see there's a bit more. You can tell he's been coached by not better, it's probably the wrong word, but also better people. Like just the technique, just the way he sits at the line. He's not hanging down. Like, what if you just watch his body position? Like, everything is just moving ready. He's only been two plays, he hasn't done anything yet. But even here, working on. Okay, nothing happens there. Let's see. That just just look like if you compare it, or maybe it's just him, but the center of gravity is there on his wagon because if the weight's in his heels, it's a lot easier to explode backwards. He's not trying to move forwards. He wants the receiver to run so he can meet him, get a jam, and move upfield. I'd assume, which is what he does. So very nice, just at the line. Like that's a that's an NFL ready corner at the line. You, you can just see. Watch that outside move, leg move. Look, bang. Block in. Yeah, I like that. Down the bottom, covered by a scoreboard, so that's brilliant. But it, it looks, from what I saw, it looks solid. Shame the touchdown went the other way. Big mill Tom. No one's thrown his way. I mean, there hasn't been a lot of action for him yet in the opening few minutes of the game. Read that very well. Very, very well. So you've got a switch release coming. And just look how quick he twigs it, look. Watches him upfield. Knows he's going to have support there. And safety's behind. Immediately flips his hips back the other way. And takes the uh, the runner in the flat upfield. Very impressive. So, oh, what a... Is that Brock Bowers? Get him in. It might not have been, but he looked quite good. Oh, I might have lost that one. Oh, I would have loved to have seen the end of that route because I thought he lost that then for a minute. Got a little bit worried, a little bit nervy. Oh, here we go. We do get it. Yeah, you got beat. Got beat. How did he get beat? Let's have a look. Yeah, receive one. Yeah, I think he opened his hips too far inside. Like, he's tried to crawl with him a bit too long, maybe expecting a break on the inner. You can see him look, like getting ready to turn for it there and it just doesn't happen. And he can't really catch him. But it's okay. It's a run fit? Yeah. Hmm. So he's good at just being there as an emergency. He's not someone that's going to get really down and dirty from what we've seen so far. It's just through traffic well there. Yeah, even there, look. That's what I mean. That was a very good play to uh, coincidentally talk about uh, like while that's happening. Um it's like he'll get to the ball, but he doesn't really want to put himself at risk, it feels like. Might be wrong, but see the alleyway come through. Like, look at the comparison. So watch Matey Boy there. Uh, that's number two. Come tearing downhill right there, I think. No, no, it's him. Sorry. I'll do it again. I don't, know where, I don't know where it comes from. I guess it's there. Yeah, look how he shoots the gap, right, with intent. Misses the tackle, but I'm not asked. It's the intent we're looking at here. And if you watch McKinsey by comparison, like, gets inside of the block, completely open, and uh, although he's being tackled, just sort of stands, doesn't want to get involved overly. That's the second time that's happened in a few plays. So that's an interesting thing to note. But how low he gets, literally at his hip. I, I really like his stance. I will say that. I think his technique at the line is very strong. <laughs> um, 
Is there a, sa- a safety you think they might take? Uh, there's probably a few, Jarrell, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I mean, we're going to get to safeties. I, I, I don't want to spoil it. I, I do want to do them all on stream because I think it is a massive position of priority. Um, but there's there's a whole there's a number of them. I, if I'm honest, I can't think of any off the top of my head. But when doing mock drafts, there's maybe two or three like second rounders that um, sort of fit well. So yeah, we'll dive into them because I've watched a ton of tape and I can't really remember at the minute. I'm a bit tired. And uh, we have guys who can miss tackles. We have guys with decent. We need guys with decent football IQ who can complete plays. He seems to be playing half-hearted. See, look, this is why these streams are good because. If you see him on the NFL Network, it's like, yeah, big guy, Kool-Aid McKinstry, runs around, swats the ball. He's a first-round pick, man. And he might well be. But at the same time, we've picked up on something there. Even in one half of play, or one quarter of play, that might be a slight concern moving forward. That he just doesn't really commit when playing the run. Or when tackling was he's very agile and he's very athletic. Like the man just like moonwalking up here, it loves it. It doesn't even have to turn, and, and that's a really hard thing to do. To move back that quickly on your toes and keep your weight forward is very difficult for a corner. Um, that's why not a lot of them do it. But it's just the other element. Like he can be very athletic and he's got the right technique. I'd like to think with Alabama, he'd have the right mentality. Maybe this is an off game. Maybe he's just taking it easy early on. We've got a deep shot and he... That's not him. Never mind. Oh, well. Oh, it was him. Take it back. Hang on. So we don't get a second look, which is annoying. But where is he in comparison? He's right underneath. So he might have lost his man there. Tries to high point the ball well. So, so the instincts are there, at least. Almost came away with a big play. He might have even broken that up. It's hard to tell with this camera quality. That's one. Up top. It's a testament to him that the court, the quarterback doesn't like go in his way. I will say that. Like that at least brings some confidence to him. See, even I know the player's down. I know the player's down. But that wasn't an intent to start with to tackle. Just sort of ran and would have probably ran around him and stood there and gone, yeah. Hmm. Where are we at? See, that's another, that, that's another one. That is another one. Look. Teammate's struggling to bring him down. And he doesn't... He, oh, he just slaps him on the back. Yeah, well done, mate. Did he actually make a tackle last season? Like, one. It's very weird. I'm hoping we can get another game where we can actually see, like... Yeah. Because the rest of the team like fights so much. And it, it just seems to be this weird cog that doesn't. Like even look at them. Look, look. All of them. Linemen, linebacker, corner, safety. All of them chipping in. There's four guys there. McKinsey wouldn't. And that does concern me a bit. I know it's only one game. But if that transpires, that is a massive red flag for me. Come down here. See, see, even there. It, that's the final play we get of him. Right? Downhill, running back. To, and look at the angle he takes. But that, I'm, I'm, I'm fuming that the YouTube logo is there. But, like, he's behind the running back. Like, he doesn't want to tackle. Call it the second best corner map for Alabama. Slap on them Jamie Burton highlights, fam. You're bare fixated on his hips, fam. Look, I'm a sucker for cornerback hips. I love it. £16 for pillows. You know, he's, he likes a soft and plush. I don't know how much I pay for pillows. I think I get mine pretty cheap. I don't really buy them regularly. I just have like a stack of like four of them. Get them all going, you know. Um, so let, let's try and find one more game because I'm not, not overly impressed with that. Who is against Xavier Worthy? Let's see if he is worthy. I, I'm just, I'm really weird. You're not blown away. I don't think he's going to be my top graded corner. And I thought he would be. It was, it was really mad. I knew already it wasn't him on that tackle. You just knew it wasn't. He's nowhere near it. I don't even know why they zoomed in on him there. He's number one. 
Where is it? Right, where's number? Why are they showing us this? Look, can you find number one? That's 13. Who's that guy? That's not number one. Is that number one there? No. Where's number one? Oh, there he was at the end, not doing fuck all, funnily enough. Even on a, an ISO matchup highlight reel, still getting exposed. It's so weird. He reminds, you know who he reminds me of? I've just twigged it, and everyone's going to hate it. And I, do you know what? It's one of them. There's a player every year that everyone is high on, and I'm not. And it was, there was Denzel Mims a couple years ago, and everyone was, oh, my God, he's, he's a first rounder. He's going to be amazing. Well, he's going to be brilliant. No, he wasn't. And I explained why, and all of that came true. And then there are a couple others. Um, what was it? Uh, Trayvon Diggs, safety. Not a fan. I hate, I'm not, I don't hate him, but I thought he was useless coming out of college. I think he's overhyped in Dallas. Um, I think this is it for me. And he reminds me of Ronald Darby. In a, in a corner that plays press very well. Is very athletic, pretty solid in coverage, but useless in tackling and against the run. And there's just this really weird like mentality that comes with it, where he's either not willing or he, whether it's a bit nervous, I don't know. But the fact this is continuing to happen on wide receiver matchup tape is concerning to me. And I, has this been picked up before? Is this a new thing? Has anyone seen anything about... McKinstry's tackling or not desire is probably the wrong word, but I, I I see a lot of Ronald Darby here. I really do. And that worries me. And I know everyone's going, well, Ronald Darby was a good corner. If you get a corner in the first round that, you know, plays a Super Bowl and uh, play with a bit like fine. Great. But not on this team. You, you can go, you can go be Ronald Darby on the Raiders for all I care. He, he, ain't, he ain't doing it here. It's not for me. Hated that. The worst move the Eagles made the offseason was re-signing Ronald Darby. And I was 100% right. And I'm seeing it now. And I don't, I don't want it. I don't care how good he is in coverage. I genuinely don't. I was very high on, on, on John Hightower. I was incredibly high on John Hightower, unfortunately. But look, I, I thing is, I'm not going to come down from that, that mountain. Because... It, in the same way, I was high on him for the same reason I'm high on Junior Colson, for instance, or, or the other matey boy we looked at from Kentucky, Traven Wallace, whatever he's called. Like, it's how they fit the Eagles. And Hightower fit the Eagles, like, for what they needed in that slot position, fit them perfectly, like, to the T of everything you could want in a slot receiver. And it just didn't pan out. But I'd rather be right not wasting assets on a pick than wrong spending, you know, fifth round, sixth round picks and them not turning out. Like, if you can get a player for in the fifth round that we find value in that then becomes uh, a moderate starter, that's great. I don't want to be mortgaging picks on players like McKinstry if there are concerns you can see on tape. Like, I just don't see it. Look, Sammy Sleeves, for a time, was the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. Had he not got injuries, he would have been brilliant. Rookie of the year. All right, he was a very, he's about as good a game manager you could possibly find. I've still not th seen a quarterback throw a spiral as beautiful as what Sammy Sleeves does, genuinely. And that was years ago. That was 2015. We're now in 2024. Not a single quarterback has thrown a prettier ball than Sam Bradford in nine years. Nine. Not Patrick Mahomes, not Josh Allen, not Josh Burrow, not Josh Burrow, Joe Burrow, not Aaron Rodgers, not Jalen Hurts, no one. Except Sam Bradford. And I'll, I'll stand on that as well. So look, I get some right, I get some wrong. Um, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's grade our, our new best friend, our first corner of the day. And this is going to go down like a cup of cold... Our second corner of the day, sorry. Uh, cool A McKinstry. Uh, agility, in fairness, 8.5. Tackling, ha! <laughs> Four. Press. Seven, speed, seven, ball skills, seven, effort, five. Are you ready, kids? Are you ready? 38. Now that would grade him lower than Junior Colson, somewhat above Jordan McGee, 
Uh, is there is we have any other comparisons yet? I know it's all individual for position, but you're looking at Jeremiah Trotter level. Sometimes the really beautiful girls don't try as hard as the ones that don't know they're beautiful. That, that is wise words. That's wise words. I like that. Um, I'd like uh, Cooper DeJean, DeJean, Cooper, uh, candidate 22. I'll add him to the sheet. I'll add him to the sheet. Um, we are going to have to leave it there, folks. I forgot. I do have something on tonight. Um, and I'm, I might stream at 12, sorry, 12, uh, in an hour. I'm not sure. I'll see how we go. But I've got to have a quick phone call. Um, Leah, is Sam Bradford and John Hines are hanging off a cliff? That is it. Don't do that to me. Don't start with that. That is horrible. I'm not standing for it. I don't know. I'd, I'd throw myself off and save both of them. I would throw myself off and save the two. I, I can't be doing that. That's, that's horrifying. I do have a Sam Bradford jersey. I don't know where it is. Do you want me to go and get it? I'll, I'll end the stream with the Brad. Let me go find it. Hang on. I'm not sure where it is. I think it's like somewhere. I don't know where that one is. I don't know where it is, uh, if I'm honest. I actually haven't got a Scooby Doo. I don't. I don't know where it is. I mean, so I don't want to leave you here for five minutes staring at a spreadsheet again. But I do have a Sam Bradford jersey. Sorry, John, you're the weakest link. Um, he is. No, obviously it's it's probably Michael Vick. Really, if we're being honest, but Sam Bradford. John fell from a high tower. High tower. See, you are. He knows. He knows. He was there when the, the John Hightower discourse was happening. He remembers the crush on Devin Duvernay. Andy Isabella was another one. I, I picked Duvernay because Duvernay's actually carved out an NFL career. Like Duvernay turned into what I really, really wanted John Hightower to become. Like just that return option, someone that's useful from the slot, uh, great depth guy, wide receiver four or five. Brilliant. So, uh, you know, I would save DuVernay. Sorry, John. And John, all John's done is subject me to criticism. Not once has he come to my aid, you know? But let, let's look at it. So, so I was wrong on John Hightower. I was right on Ronald Darby. I was right on Denzel Mims. Uh, I was right on Jalen Mills. I was right on Boston Scott being good. I was right on Crave on LeBlanc. Who else was I wrong? What, what whiffs have I actually... Oh, Sam Bradford, I guess. Um, Any whiffs? Like, I'm trying to think big. Alex Singleton, I don't think counts as a whiff. Because he was pretty serviceable. Um, I, I was quite high on Nate Gary. I will say that. That wasn't a great era for me. Um, I'm trying to think of any other ones that I was like really high on. Jalen Rager is probably the most famous one where I had him graded higher than Jefferson. Um, yeah, I thought that was coming. Like I had, him, I had him graded higher than Jefferson and was adamant he'd be the better pick for the Eagles. And he turned out... Oh, no, no. I'm on about being right on him being... But... Well, that's a discourse for another day. We'll, we'll leave. I, I, won't start, I don't mind Jalen Mills. I've softened on him. But Rager, I, I definitely whiffed on. So I'd, I'd say it balances out. You know, we've been right and we've been wrong. It's part of the game. It's part of what we do. But there's none that break me more than John Hightower. Like, being wrong on Rager sucked because it was a first round pick. Being wrong on Hightower, it costs them nothing. It was a fifth round pick. I don't care. Like I do care, but like it's it's a fifth rounder. A first rounder being wrong where they chose him over who is now arguably the best receiver in football. That is pure pain. And I, I think I'll live that one down. So, so that is by far the worst. But um I'm not here on Friday night. I'm sorry. Like, it's heartbreaking, I know. Um, but I'll try to do one Saturday night. And if I don't, I promise I'll do one Sunday. So I'm away Friday uh, because my birthday's next week. So me and my friends are going to see my favorite soccer team play. 
uh, and have a little boogie and play some play some karaoke, sing some karaoke. So I, I won't be, or I'll be very tipsy if I am. So um, either Saturday night or Sunday night, I'll, I'll do one of these streams. We'll go go a bit longer. I might stream a lot on Sunday. We'll do like three or four hours here, or two or three hours here, and then we'll do some on the Twitch channel as well. Um, just again, if you're not following me on Twitch, um, twitch.tv slash retrojenko. I'll be there most nights. Um, I'm not watching Tottenham, Martian. Not watching Tottenham. Behave yourself. Come on now. The mighty Charlton Athletic. Karaoke is the saddest thing ever. It is until I light up the bar and it turns into like prime Glastonbury when I sing Taylor Swift love story at the top of my lungs is all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. And um, Rager had potential. That's yeah, he had the potential. He just um. That was very soft mentally. Um, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I read the other day that he was like first in return yards or something, like for kick returns. Chelsea, and it's stop it. Honestly, unbelievable. Um, I miss Craven too. I've DM'd him, I've emailed him, I've looked for interviews, see, especially last year when he was like sick, then he might be good to come back, and nothing ever came of it. So that kind of sucked. But yeah, um, I'll be back on. I'll provisionally say Saturday evening, if not Sunday, and um, we'll go. We'll go again. We'll get some more players on. But just before we go, uh, a look at what we've got so far. These are our linebackers. Uh, we've got two corners now and another receiver. So another three players added. We do need a deep dive, but I, I will do one soon. Um, yeah, I just kind of well, I forgot I had something on at like ten minutes time. So. I hope you've all had a great week. Thank you all for hanging out. Um, if you could like the video on your way out, that'd be absolutely stupendous. The club I am following or, or going to see is Charlton Athletic, who, if you play FIFA, are in League One, not the French one, the League One, like the number, not the English League One, EFL League One. They're in that. They're awful, but I love them. Um, look, even, even got the shirt on, look, I'm sorry. Even got the shirt on. No, I like the mighty Charlton. We're on the boys. And. Um, so yeah, we're going to see those guys. But thank you all for hanging out this week. I've really enjoyed these streams. And um, like I said, we'll do it again over the weekend. We'll have a longer one in and we'll really grind out some players. But until then, have an amazing weekend. Enjoy opening day for the games that aren't ranked off. And I'll see you soon. Go Birds. Take care.